Hi guys, it's Clarice and welcome to another video tutorial with me. Uh, in this video we are going to be doing something cute, simple and pretty like this right here. Um, I'm going to walk you through my supplies really quickly before we begin. This is a combination of my regular white knights and some KMS metallics. Uh, and again, this video is going to be simple because I am trying to um, enable and encourage the folks that are just starting on their journey in watercolor. So here's your chance to learn a few simple ways to create these elements and then go ahead and create your own little bunch of florals. So uh, really quickly, my supplies. So for brushes, I am going to be using the Zen Art Supplies um, black tulip collection the regular round eight and the regular number two and because i need another brush handy i am keeping the princeton number eight uh, on the side and available i've got two little bowls of water on here oops and for our paper this time we are using uh, postcards postcard paper by etcher and for metallics, I'll be using the bronze by KMS. And then obviously I've got a whole bunch of colors here, 36, my set of 36 by uh, White Knights. So I'm keeping that on the side. And let's see what else. Oh, paper towel handy just in case. And that's it, we are ready to begin. All right, so this is what that looks like. You can see these leaves over here are metallics and then the others are just regular. I've got some of the metallic in the center of the florals as well. And this is just to kind of have it blend in and pull from the same colors that we've used. All right, so we are now officially ready to begin. All right, so I have zoomed in so you can see my paint strokes better. Keep everything out of the frame so you can just focus in on how I am painting um, the big florals first. So I'll be using both these brushes to start and I will be mixing for the flower petals, I'll be mixing some cadmium red, and that is this color right here. And then for the center, I'll be using some raw sienna, and that is this color right here. Okay, so I'll be kind of distributing them evenly amongst these two brushes. And what I wanna do is make sure that I have a very light, light, um, version of the cadmium red because it's a very bright color so let's say it's more of a watered down version of it okay so something like that where it's like 30 70 percentage if you can see and this way if you feel like you want it to be darker you can always go in and get more color but if you want it to be lighter and you went really dark you can't really undo that so that is the logic behind that. Also, I want this arrangement to be very light and fun and pastel-y in nature. So I'm getting some of my raw sienna on this side here. And the reason how I've decided which brush is going to do what is, this has a beautiful tip right here, and so I'd like to have that for my petals. That's why I'm using the, the Zen Art brush for the petals. And then for the cone center, I'm just using this uh, Princeton number eight, and that's because the tip on this one isn't as sharp as this one, okay? So just to give you a little bit of logic behind my madness there. Okay, so we are ready to begin. First thing I'm gonna do is just quickly, quickly uh, decide where I want these florals to be. So just like in my example right here, I'll have one at the top one slightly midway and then one at the very bottom and then three is enough. So we're gonna start off by doing the semicircle center. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just going to paint out a semicircle and then roughly kind of paint it in. Uh, I, If you feel like there's too much water pooling, this is where your paper towel comes in handy. Just kind of dab away at it, put it aside and just take the color and kind of move it around. What I am doing is leaving a little bit of white space here and there because I like the loose effect and this is how you get the loose effect by kind of leaving some white space 
in your painting, not coloring it all in. Okay, so there's one. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next one. So for the next one, I'm gonna do mine over here. And then again, we wanna do another one. Let's get some darker hues happening. We'll do another one over here on this end, turning this way. If you feel like it's too dry, the paint, just dip the tip of your brush in water and then continue creating your little shape. And that should help you. All right, perfect. And now we're going in, actually, let me get some darker color on here because the other ones seem to be nice and dark and this one is, isn't. Okay, next we are going in with this brush and we've got our cadmium ready already. So we're just going to go in and from outside in, we're just pressing down and going inward. I'll do one very light one off to the side here so it looks like it's in the background. And then we're just kind of repeating this throughout. And again, if you feel like there's too much water, just dabs, dab, dab, dab the tip of your brush onto a paper towel. It's having a little bit of difficulty talking there. And what we also want to do is push all the color to the center of the flower. And Another key point to keep in mind is notice the white space in between the petals. That is something cute. Uh, again, enhances the whole loose watercolor technique. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, now as we go on, um, notice also there's a little bit of white space here and there, so that's nice. What I'm doing is I've got some color directly from the color palette and I'm just kind of adding it to these areas here before we move on to doing the next few. So let's do this one next. And again, you can notice how they're fanned out, right? Now these ones seem to be a tad bit darker. Again, I just went in and dipped the tip of my brush in water very, very quickly. And then I'm resuming my petals. I'm trying to keep that white space in the middle of the petal just to kind of maybe indicate a glisten maybe. Dipping the tip of my brush in water again. We're gonna go ahead and do this last one right here. This one doesn't have any white space. Well, a little bit over here. It's fine if some of them don't have white space, but try and intentionally add some white space in there. Adding more petals here. I think just two more and we should be good. Do one that's kind of, or two rather, on either side that looks like it's just whoop, outside. And now I'm just taking, using the tip of my brush, just getting some additional cadmium red, and I'm highlighting a couple areas in the, in the petals that we have here. Okay. So maybe a little bit here. Try and get it in the center because sometimes uh, what can happen is. It can give you that nice dark to light effect, which is quite nice for um, adding some dimension to your flowers. So I'm just adding some of that here and there, just towards the center. And uh, what's even better is when it is still damp, then when you're adding this darker hue, it kind of gives you a beautiful gradient. So that's the whole idea. Okay, all right, so there we go. We have finished these flowers. Now we can go ahead and paint in the stems. 
So for the stems, again, I like to use the nice pointed tip. So we're going to use this number eight. And I'll just be using the chromium oxide, which is right there. And then for the darker hues, we'll just either, you can either use like an umber or a green to kind of get in some darker um, shading in on the petals. Okay. So I've mixed some of that on the side and we're going to go ahead and paint this here. So we'll do one stem here, one here, and then one here, all right? You gotta plan where your stems are going as well. Again, I'm using just the tip of my brush. I might have to have another go, most definitely, to kind of finish the thickness of this stem. If you're antsy about doing something like this, I would suggest just taking a rough sheet of paper and just practicing before you attempt painting this in. That can be helpful. And if something like that happens right here where some of the green gets mixed in, that's okay. That's actually kind of a nice thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and add some additional highlights in the areas where It's like near a shadowy area, so like at the top where the flower is attached and then just right here where this petal is. And then let's go ahead and do the next one. And for that, let's just do this stem coming here. Just as soon as we are done painting these stems in, try and line them up at the bottom. I think it will be better at the end in terms of presentation. Um, see, this is a little bit too much bleeding, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe off some of the green from the flower. And here's one more stem. Get a little bit more green. Start the stem this way and then it will be a better guide as I go downward. So this one is kind of intermingling almost with the flower in the background. So I got this little stump here that I've done by accident. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use whatever remaining green I have and create a leaf. So you can give these a little bit of a leaf here and there. Just one is enough on each. So another small one on this guy here. And now, like I said, let's take some of the darker green and highlight some of these areas. So I'm taking my green and these areas are still damp, most of them at least. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a couple of strokes here and there. And it really, really, really will end up making this pop so much more and giving you a, and you'll, you'll be able to tell what's where just by adding a little bit of this extra green. And then if you wanna just add dark, this darker green at the bottom of these stems, just to kind of make it pop more, um, yeah, I'm gonna do that, so feel free to do that if you like the effect or if you don't want to do that. Just leave it light. It's a choice. I encourage you guys to make choices like this all the time so that you can develop in your own style and um, not be afraid to try new things because the point of watercolor is, besides it being relaxing and fun, is you find your own style and then run with it. As long as you're satisfied, we're all good. Okay, so we've done that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and paint these little guys right there. Super simple, I've done them in several of my videos. So the point with that is we need a slightly different green so it stands out more. The green will be lighter than what we have here. So I'm going to use the chromium and mix it with a little bit of the yellow. And 
can see what that looks like over here. This is too much yellow, so I'm going to get some more of that chromium green and add it in. There we go. This is a nicer green. Um, we are using bronze, so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of umber to this to give me that more olivey look. Perfect. And now that I have this, I will use this brush to continue and paint those nice pretty little leaves. And they can be addicting to do. Again, we want to be strategic in where we're placing them so we don't want them all over the place. So I will do one over on this side here. And I don't want it to be taller than that flower so I'll use this as a guide and kind of just paint this leaf in nice long thin leaves try and get some white space in between them the leaves that is if you can if you're overlapping on some of the other green stems that's okay try it out and see what happens there's some nice faded effects that you can achieve or overlapping effects rather Here's another one, and I'll try and have this leaf to be a little bit of a, like with a bend, so it gives it like some nice movement. Again, don't forget the white space. The white space is very helpful. Okay. I'll do one more here. If you struggle with leaves, I highly recommend you check out the beginner video on leaves that I did earlier this year, and I also did one last year. So you can check those videos out and get some practice in. Okay, so this is the stem for this one. I didn't do the stem for that one over here yet, but let's just do one over here. So notice I'm not really connecting it. I think this is enough. I think that's great, perfect, I love it. Um, I think we'll just leave the two. Let's do the blue little flowers and then we'll decide if we need any more of these guys in there, okay? So, so for the blue flowers, we are going to be using the cerulean blue, which is right there. And this time I will use my I will use the Princeton brush to kind of mix some of the cerulean blue and let me just get that in. You know what? I am just realizing that I allowed the centers to dry without adding the bronze in. That's okay. We'll just add it in a little bit later. So my cerulean blue is right here and I'm just going to mix some of that blue. I want, I want you guys to be able to see this. and. So I've got a little bit of blue happening here, so I'm just going to mix it there. I've got a little bit of purple in there too, so if we get a combination of both, I'm okay with that. Okay, so using just the tip of this brush, we're going to go and lightly decide. First of all, we want to decide where these florals are going to be, and then we're going to go ahead and paint them. So definitely some here at the bottom, definitely some over here at the top and then some slightly higher up there, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and create the ones at the bottom here first. So <clears throat> um, let's do some over here. And what I'm doing is doing these light curvature comma strokes. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'll do a lighter version of this at the top. Keep in mind, we gotta decide how these florals are gonna be, so which direction. So I'll do another one here. They're literally just little dabs of color to give you, give you some nice little pops. Do one flower kind of facing that way. So 
So I think this is good. Let's just do one more. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and get some more happening at the top over here. Maybe these, I'll just have three at the top, like one tiny one and then two of those. No, I'll do one more because what I wanted it, what I wanted to happen was either this is taller or this is tall, but not both at the same height. So I'll just do some very light ones at the top. Okay, that's great. Um, moving on to down here. Just going to turn this over so we can have some cute little flowers here. Perfect. So what I'm doing over here now is I'm just adding a couple of dots here and there just to kind of indicate that Lucy effect, which we like and love. Getting a little bit of that extra purple that I have on my palette and I'm just adding it in certain areas over here. Just dabbing a little bit off and on. Not off, just on. <laughs> I'm not taking it off. Um, and this is just to give it that dual tone, duo tone look. Just some of them, not it doesn't have to be all of them. All right, perfect. So we've done that. Now we are moving on to the branches for this. And so for the green stems here, we can continue to use the chromium oxide if you wish, or use a slightly darker um, hue of it. Uh, and that would entail either mixing a little bit more of the umber into the chromium just to get a variation of it. So that is my idea of using slightly darker. If you want to use just a completely different green and just to see what happens, you can try that. I'm just mixing some of that onto the side here. And I will use this now to paint it in. <coughs> So these are fun for me because we'll start from here. Actually, I need a little bit darker color on my brush. There we go. We're going to attach these flowers to the stems. And they're so delicate and cute. I absolutely love how they enhance the whole composition. Keep in mind, you don't have to do this whole attaching thing throughout if you don't feel like it. It's okay. But if you feel that urge, then you can go for it. Here's the next one. Because this is so close to the bottom, I'm giving it a stem that you can actually see. Just getting a little bit more color onto my brush, just highlighting the areas that are closest to the flowers with this darker hue and connecting the rest that are still floating in air. There we go, perfect. We got that one last one to do. And once we're done that, we move on to the metallic leaves. I'm just doing like a rough line in there just so it, the colors are all over, like we've got like a different green happening here. So I want to make sure that it is represented properly in the stems below. Oh, this became too thick, but that's okay. All right. Okay. So I think we're done with these. 
We don't need to give these any leaves at all. I think these are fine. What I would do is, if you would like, at the end we can add some lighter looking leaves. Excuse me. Just like these. And so leave whatever leftover green you have. We can just water it down and add some nice uh, extra background kind of leaves. Okay, so this uh, now takes us into doing our metallic leaves. And for that, we're using the rigger number two and bronze right here. So I'm going to quickly activate this metallic bronze right here. And we are again using the tip of this rigger to create these leaves. If you don't have a rigger and you just want to use a regular brush in a smaller size, like maybe a six or a four, that also works. I like using the rigger as it is part of the Zen Art supplies, like the Black Tulip collection, and the rigger allows for loose looking um, stems and leaves, and I love it. Plus it gives me this beautiful like tip, again, that I'm able to like enhance and create these pretty looking leaves like that. All right, so um, here we go. Let's create one going right from here all the way up. So I am literally using the tip of my brush and very lightly trailing along. And I want this to be slightly longer than these guys here. And then you see what I did to kind of finish that leaf off right there. I'll do one that's slightly smaller and I'm pressing down as I'm doing the second stroke in this area so I can get a nice thick and thin. Now I realize some of you who are beginners, if you, again, if you've not done leaves before, this might be a little bit of a challenge to get the shape. It is very simple once you do get it. It involves just picking up your brush and doing a little bit of practice. And trust me, once you start, you can't stop because it's so relaxing to do. I'll do another stem coming out from this guy. And one of the leaves kind of this way. And another one kind of just overlapping these guys over here. Now the thing with the metallic, because it's nice and opaque, it gives us this nice overlapping effect opaque effect. I'll just do one very kind of loosey looking one at the bottom. Okay, I like two. I did two. And now we'll do this repeated over on this end. So we've got some kind of falling over over here. So let's do one over here. Again, I'm trying to add a little bit of white space in between these leaves just so it gives me that nice, beautiful, loosey kind of effect. So at this point, I want you to kind of use your judgment and decide for yourself like where you would like to have the leaves happen or appear or be painted, however you want to word that. Okay, so we've got some here, we've got some there. We can have maybe some peeking out from here. And then I think we can call it a day. I'll just do a little bit happening here. Notice as I am doing these, I am keeping some white space in between the leaves. Well, this one at least. All right, perfect. Okay, so I think this looks fabulous. So now that we have this, we can go in and add some light green 
uh, leaves kind of just fluffing up maybe these areas here to kind of make it look like a nice full bunch. Uh, other than that, I don't think it really needs too much. Let's compare. So this was my first one. This is the second one, right? So you can decide based on looking at both of these if you would like to have any more of that or not. Notice this looks to be a lot darker, but it's also not fully dried up yet. I would like to add some of these, so we're going to go ahead and add some of those. So the brush I will use is the round eight, the Zen brush. And again, as I mentioned previously, we're going to be using the leftover green, watered down green, greens, because there's two different kinds that we've been using. I'll use this one right here. Just kind of really light. This way you kind of fluff up the page nicely. All right, so. So I'll add some happening here. And we want to push all the color or water down to the bottom of the leaf. I'll add some happening over here in between these flowers. And <clears throat> makes sense to have some over here. Perfect, and let's go ahead and add some on this end. So um, I'm gone, I've gone silent. I'm not describing too much here just because I, I don't feel like I need to be describing what I'm doing. You guys know, um, just kind of use your, use your creative imagination to decide where you would like yours to be and just go with it. Overlapping some over here. Oops, this is not dried up properly so I can see some brown coming. Make sure your stuff is dried up properly before you kind of go ahead and add these enhancements. It's a little bit of brown there, but that's okay. It's not too bad, still really like it. Maybe I'll just add some in between there and then we're good. Most of these don't even have stems anymore at this point. They're just literally leaves poking out. And that's okay because remember, this is a very loose style of painting. We're not looking for detail. We're looking for loose, pretty burst of color. And you can actually end this off with a splatter if you wish. So for those who love splatters, here's your chance. I'm kind of giving some leaves kind of falling out or painting some leaves in light ones as if they're falling out. Perfect, I love it. I'm not gonna do anything else anymore um, except to maybe give it a splatter with uh, I was going to say with the metallic, but I think it would be nicer to give it a splatter with the green instead. So I'm going to get some of my chromium oxide green. 
onto my brush that has a fair bit of water on it. And you need your brush to have a little bit of water on it so that when you do your splatter, you have splatters because there's water. I'm going to add the splatters at the bottom so that it looks like it's a lot fuller at the bottom. If you want to cover up the edges so that it doesn't get on there, uh, go ahead and do that. I don't mind if it goes on my edges and so that's why I have mine kind of wide open. So I want the splatters right here and up there at the top. Maybe a little bit at the top here. That's it. I'm not going to do more splatters anywhere else. I'm just kind of making it splatter heavy at the bottom. Done. Not doing any more. And that's that guys. Here we are. It is done. Okay. Let me put both of these side by side so you can see the difference. All right, here they are side by side, zoomed out. So you can see the difference if you add more detail versus just keeping it light and loose and airy. It's entirely up to you and your preference, of course. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit that like button if you like this and consider subscribing if you like videos like this or if you are just starting out learning watercolor and you like flowers. I have a ton of videos like this on my channel already and I love seeing your work so if you do end up doing this please do tag me on Instagram and Facebook. And again all the supplies used in this video are listed in the description below. So thanks guys for watching again and we'll chat soon. Bye!